All right, greetings church, and we're back again. Are you ready to be discipled by the Word of God? Let's trust God to do something spectacular in our lives, shall we? We continue in our series, The Armor of God, and we are currently using the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and we are going to be reading verses 10 through to 20. Yes, yes, I know, we've done it the last two uh, devotions as well. Well, we're going to do it again and again and again, and we'll do it again finally. Right, let's, let's go into the Word of God, shall we? But before we do, let's pray. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for your grace. And Lord, above all, just how often, Father, you, you use insignificant times to speak into our lives in a really radical way. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak as only you can, that you will challenge as only you can. And as we break bread, may the truth of God be revealed into our lives, into our deepest in the most beings, and may we be able to live in that truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Right, verse 10, shall we get going? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let's read verse 16 again as that's our verse for today. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. The shield of faith. Well, the shield of faith extinguishes the flaming arrows, isn't it? That's what we've heard in God's Word. And isn't our faith so, so important? See, we believe in God, though we cannot see Him with our eyes. We believe God can do the impossible. Amen, hallelujah. We believe God can do the impossible. We believe that God is more powerful than anything the enemy can throw at us. Do you believe that today, church? We believe that God is more powerful than anything the enemy can throw at us. And you see, we put our faith into action as James suggests in James 2, verses 14 through to 26. And we'll read that now. As we go about making disciples and doing good deeds, or, or living out Jesus. Let's have a look and see what does James 2, verses 14 through to 26 tell us. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, foolish man, that faith without works is dead? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abram believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Let me just read verse 26 again. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now shields in the day of Paul were six feet tall and designed to lock into other shields. So one important way that we use our shields of faith is to lock shields with other believers. As we share with others our burdens and our areas where we are being attacked and listen up church, we pray together, our faith is strengthened. As we pray together, our faith is strengthened. Jesus' most vulnerable times on earth as a man were when he was alone. During the temptation in the desert and in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knows this. Jesus knows we are stronger when we are together. Jesus knows we are stronger when we are together. That's why he picked a group of men and why he sent them out two by two. We must take up our shield of faith. Which means this, we are intentional. Hebrews 11 verse 1 as we close says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. God bless you, God keep you, and God make His face shine upon you. Shall we pray? Father, we pray your blessing and your favor over our day, Lord. And may we understand what it is, what faith is, as we walk on this earth. Taking up our shield of faith, Lord. Realizing the significance of our mighty God. May you... Dress us in this armor as we hold the shield. May we hold shields together. And may we be counted as your children in your kingdom. In the mighty name.